Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a very quick review of how I set up my GH5 for run and gun filmmaking. Now, I appreciate that I'm a little bit late to the game and that there's already hundreds of videos on this topic, but I still think that I have something new to offer. So let me just quickly whiz through the settings of how I set this up for filmmaking. Let's switch this on. Now, right off the bat, a couple of things that you should automatically implement is make sure that you're set up to shoot in the 24 hertz cinema mode. This way, you're basically gonna shoot true 24 frames per second. That is number one. Number two, just very quickly, um, record format. I found the best one to be uh, .mov. Uh, it's just an easier codec for your computer to work with um, and you can retain pretty high quality files uh, by shooting .mov. Now, when I'm shooting a roll um, for interviews and stuff and just, just capturing basically, you know, life as it is in 24 frames per second, I'm shooting mostly in 100 megabits, 420, 8-bit, uh, 24 frames per second. That's my standard sort of like, you know, run and gun shooting video mode. Um, over here, if I go through these settings very quickly, exposure is of course manual. In this setting, one thing that I wanna point out is that when I first got to the camera, I also did my research and I looked at what other people were using, what kind of picture profiles, and everybody was recommending Vlog, which costs money, or Cine D because it's got slightly better dynamic range. However, after testing all of these settings myself, um, I actually found that the best picture profile for me is Shock Horror Cine V. I use Cine V, not Cine D. The reason why is I found that in Cine D, the colors are just a little bit too bleak in my opinion. And even with color grading, it takes quite a lot of fiddling. Maybe you get slightly better dynamic range, but not amazingly better. And the skin tones are, unfortunately, what I found, they're, they're off a lot of the time. They're, they, actually, they either have a bit of a magenta tint to, it, to them or a bit of a green tint to them. It's weird, I don't know. Didn't like it. And after further testing, I found that this picture profile works a lot better. I've got um, contrast set to minus five, sharpness to minus three, noise reduction is on zero, saturation is on minus five. And look, these pictures that you're seeing on screen right now, this is straight out of camera. This is zero color grading. And what I love about this picture profile is that it gives me such a good clean base from which to work on. And with just a couple of minor, minor tweaks, you can get your colors looking amazing. So yeah, GH5 Cine V, highly recommended. Um, okay, now what else do we need to know? Over here, filter settings off. This, you don't really need to worry about any of these things at all, mic level is set to minus 12 dB. I'm using the Sennheiser um, microphone, wireless microphone. I'm gonna put the name here. It's an entry level wireless microphone, but it works well with the GH5, with the preamps. Wind noise cancelers on standards, mic level limiter is on. And if we quickly have a look at exposure over here, ISO, I highly recommend this for you to set to thirds because this way you're gonna get more control over ISO. Extended ISO is on, that basically allows you to shoot on ISO 100, which is good if you wanna just get an even cleaner looking image. Um, now, I wanna talk about autofocus. Usually, 99% of the time, I am shooting manual uh, focus. However, um, I did find that at the moment I'm using this Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4, and surprisingly, in autofocus singular, uh, the autofocus works well, quite well with this lens. So I do have autofocus switched on um, at the moment, um, but usually, yes, I am shooting manual focus. And when I'm shooting manual focus, I have this AFAE lock button over here set up to this function. What that basically does is that when you're shooting in 24 frames per second, when you press this button over here, 
the even when you're in manual focus mode, the focus will jump to whatever is in the center of the box that you have on your screen. Now I want to stress that that this only works in 24 frames per second. When you're shooting in variable frame rate, you have to set the manual focus by actually rotating the focusing ring directly onto on your lens. And this actually wasn't clear to me because before I got this camera, I watched loads and loads of videos on the GH5 and how to set it up. And it wasn't made clear to me that uh, this function over here won't work in variable frame rate. Uh, because on more entry level uh, models of the Lumix cameras like the G80 or the GX80, even when you're shooting in uh, 60 frames per second, you can in fact use this like button to shift your focus without rotating the uh, lens ring physically. Um, but this doesn't work in .MOV format on the GH5 in variable frame rate. So just bear that in mind. Okay, now um, shutter autofocus is on. This is basically when you have pressed the shutter, when you're taking some stills, useful to have the choice between this button and half pressing the shutter. Uh, quick autofocus is off. Everything here is basically switched off, nothing too important. Manual focus display assist is set on full. This is basically when you rotate the ring and the camera crops, you want it to crop fully on your screen so you can definitely nail that focus. Guidelines, I've set it to the rule of thirds. Video guidelines, this is quite useful to have. It gives you little dotted lines on your screen for when, if you wanna ever have a more cinematic aspect ratio. This one is quite useful because when you're flipping between your custom settings, your C1 and C2 and all that kind of stuff, this will just basically remember what position your lens focus is in and this way you're, you're not gonna have to refocus all the time. Right, so when I'm shooting. I've got this first button over here. This controls my focus, right? And when I have my joystick and when I press, see that crops 100%. I'm filming this in a dark room, so there's nothing to see. But anyway, that's quite self-explanatory. So focus. This button over here, and oh, by the way, to set these buttons up, you just have to press and hold, and then you can choose which function you have. Um, but yeah, this button over here, actually this is set up to auto white balance. Sometimes I just find it useful to check just when I'm setting my uh, white balance manually. Sometimes I do I do tap into auto white balance just to see what the camera is suggesting, what kind of white balance is suggesting, and then I can adjust and dial a white balance in more precisely. But this is like a, an aid button, if you will. This function button at the bottom is for your crop. Uh, this is quite useful actually. When you're shooting in 1080p, um, you can flick this on and the camera will crop in. I believe it crops in by a factor of two, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, don't quote me on this, I haven't checked. But yeah, it crops in and if you need to punch into your video, uh, this is quite useful just to have in a pinch. I shoot mostly on prime lenses, so sometimes when I don't have enough reach, this uh, crop in function is uh, quite cool to have. Function button over here, and this is basically my uh, 4K live crop. This is useful when you're shooting some B-roll or some product video. You have this crop setting that you can assign to this button to have like a 40 second slider shot set up or a 20 second slider shot set up. That's how I use it. Um, and then finally, 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 we have one more function button. It's just where my finger is over here. There's a function button and that button is very useful. When I press that, you see what happens to the stabilization. It goes into this mode with the square. And what that does is it stabilizes whatever is in the background. And so it, this um, stabilization is designed to mimic, is designed to mimic uh, your IS lock. So it's, uh, it mimics a tripod shot. Uh, this is not designed for you to uh, switch on and then to move the camera. You just basically switch it on, hold the camera in one place like it's right now, and it's basically gonna mimic this uh, tripod setup. So you don't move the camera, but when you're shooting, like for example, just someone standing or talking, or if you're shooting on a very uh, telephoto lens and uh, you're shooting in a high wind environment or it's very shaky or your hands are cold or something, it's, it's useful to flick this on. So yeah, IS lock is set to the function button at the front. Now, this 
is my standard 24 frames per second. This C1, I am shooting in 60 frames per second. So this is a variable frame rate. C2, um, I am shooting in 120 frames per second. And then C3, I've got that set up to a variable frame rate of the camera shooting two frames per second. And this is like my uh, quick and dirty way to get a, a time lapse going. So yeah, C3, two frames per second, 120, 60, and then my standard 24 frames per second. Everything is shot in 1080p, 8-bit. Shock horror. I know that this camera can produce so much more, but in my opinion, if you wanna, I have massive respect for people that color grade their videos professionally. I just think that if you wanna color grade your videos, you should be shooting in vlog, editing your footage on a nice big screen, and really putting in a lot of, uh, like being a colorist is, is a whole different uh, profession. Uh, so uh, I think it's amazing that people that do that. I just wanna find the quickest way out of this GH5 to shoot good clean video and not to basically overcomplicate it in post. So yeah, 8 bit and uh, 100 and 1080p basically. I'm not even using the 4K on this camera at the moment. Let me know what picture profile you're shooting on your GH5 in the comments below. And uh, yeah, subscribe. There is gonna be a lot more Micro Four Thirds related content over here. Some travel videos here and there. And also I'm gonna be documenting a, just my journey as a freelancer, you know, trying to survive in the post apocalyptic world of uh, <laughs> freelance videography uh, in the UK. So if this is something that you're interested in or if you just wanna get some inspiration, yeah, check out the other videos, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode.